now to Japan's nuclear crisis. And this morning, the nation is on maximum nuclear alert. Government officials have raised the accident level at that crippled Fukushima Daiichi plant from a Category 5, equivalent to Three Mile Island in 1979, to a Category 7, indicating a major accident. That's the highest level on the international scale for nuclear accidents, and it's on par with the Chernobyl disaster. All right, so what does that spike mean? What does that change in the warning level mean? Joining us now from Burlington, Vermont, is nuclear en uh, engineer Arnold Gunderson. Arnold, good to see you again. Tell us, uh, quite frankly, what this means. Well, Chernobyl had a single reactor that melted down, and they have three, plus the fuel pool. So it's... Uh, it's been pretty clear all along that this was on par with Chernobyl. What it means is that the emergency planning zones are getting pushed out, but I think that should have happened sooner anyway. Well, that's one of my questions, Arnold, because it feels as though all along the way um, we've been playing a little bit of catch-up in terms of, mm -hmm. of, of officials mm -hmm. telling us the severity of it. And I understand that you, you can't get in there for, you couldn't get in there to see what was going on, but I mean, do you feel as though officials have a handle on this and they're going to be able to see it through from here on out? Well, I think this is the first time they've really recognized how serious it is. Right. Before that, you're absolutely right. They have, uh, they've been way behind the eight ball on that one. Uh, Arnold, we, we, we're, experts have said that really only one-tenth of the amount of radiation that Chernobyl gave off has come out of, uh, or is likely to come out of these uh, reactors. So what should the public be thinking about this level, this change of level from five to seven? Does it mean more people are going to be irradiated? Um, yeah, you know, Chernobyl was, uh, was, had a, was covered by this point in time, and here this accident is just continuing on. There was, um, um, the, what this means is there have been 10,000 trillion disintegrations every second have been released already from the plant. So this is based on what has already happened, and, and really it, it, it can get worse as you look forward. When we talk about all of these uh, aftershocks, and we're still looking, we're looking at pictures right now of what just the, da the buildings still look so damaged. Um, are you still concerned about further deterioration from here on out? Are we in a uh, how to clean up phase yet? Or are we still in a contain the crisis phase? No, we're still in a containment crisis phase. You know, these buildings were designed to be dry, and now they're trying to flood them with water. And while that's good to cool, in the event of an earthquake, a serious aftershock, mm -hmm. these buildings can't take all that weight. All right, so uh, when you said that Chernobyl by this time was already covered, what was different there that we could cover Chernobyl that quickly that we can't do in Japan? Um, yeah, Chernobyl was a single reactor, and, and of course here, if you work on one, you're being contaminated by the others. Um, and actually, the sheer magnitude of this one um, uh, even though releases may be the same, you essentially have seven balls in the air at the same time. The three reactor cores in meltdown and four fuel pools, on, uh, including unit four. Um, so there's not a single problem to focus on, but in fact, you've got to successfully juggle seven balls at the same time. We were talking earlier to a guest who told us that it's going to require um, unbelievable heavy, you know, earth-moving equipment and getting all of this rubble out of the area and the scope of the, of the nuclear contamination around this area. What, what do you think is the, the risk for humans, for the, for the broader uh, environment, but, but more importantly for the people in this region of Japan and how, how they're going to ever be able to clean this up? Well, I think within, uh, within 10 kilometers or 6 miles, uh, they're not going to clean it up in, within a generation. And people are wow. not going to come back in in, in the six-mile zone. Um, out, if there's one good thing here, it's that predominantly the wind has been blowing out to sea. If the wind had been blowing across Japan the other way, uh, this, this could be even worse. Arnold, is there anything you, uh, you see that's being done or obviously not being done that can end this sooner? Is there something obvious that they're missing or have we got the, the world's brightest minds working on trying to solve this? You know, it, this, is their, this is the best outcome that could have happened given where they were a month ago. They, they really have played their cards as well as they could. And, and still we have, uh, you know, an unimaginable catastrophe on our hands. The only thing that you, um, you seem critical of is that they should have uh, widened the perimeter in which people are not earlier. allowed earlier. Yes, especially for, for pregnant women and children. Out to, I, I had been saying out to 25 miles uh, three weeks ago. That was pretty evident to me.
All right, Arnold Gunderson, Chief Engineer, Fairwinds Associates. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your perspective. Thank you.